Bonjour. Ancient tower blocks. How is everyone? I hope everyone's all right. It's snowing where I am at the moment, and it's uh, it's quite nice. It's quite nice. So yeah. While I was looking at the doing the last video, I've come across um, star faults on and or parallel with an alignment, and also I come across doing these. Come across tower blocks in these. Star faults. Uh, some of them have got them in there, some have got some left, some have been destroyed. And then, with this bit of information, I decided to go all around the world and have a look at tower blocks. And couldn't believe it, could not believe it. I found some that are two and a half thousand years old. I've uh, found ones made out of mud. So, we're gonna have a little looky, little looky wooky. So, this is Bologna at the moment. Now, if you type in tower blocks, this is probably what will come up. And if you watch other videos on alternative history and things like that, this is probably what people are going to show you. Bologna, maybe Florence, Faenza. There's a few. To be honest with you, I couldn't believe how many tower blocks were in, around. To be honest with you, I couldn't believe it. So, what are tower houses? Let's have a look. A tower house is a particular type of stone structure built for defensive purpose as well as habitation. Tower houses began to appear in the Middle Ages, especially in mountainous or limited access areas, in order to command and defend strategic points with reduced forces. At this time, they were also used as an aristocrat residence around which a castle town was often constructed. Uh, we call them star forts these days. After their initial appearance in Ireland, Scotland and England, during the High Middle Ages, tower houses were also built in other parts of Western Europe, especially in parts of France and Italy. Most northern Italian cities had a number of these by the end of the Middle Ages, but few now remain. Notably two towers in Bologna, a 14th circular tower in the small city of San Gimignano in Tuscany. Now these are the best groups to survive. Tower houses are very commonly found in northern Spain, especially in the southern Basque country. Some of them dating back to the 8th century, they were mainly used as notable residents and were able to provide shelter against several enemies, starting with the Arabs and uh, the later Castile and Aragon. From 1379 to 1456, the upper floors of most of them were demolished. Few have survived unscathed to this present day. Since then, they have been used only as residents by their traditional noble owners. To the west of the Basque country, in Cantabria and Astorius, similar tower houses are found. Furthest west in the Iberian Peninsula and the Galactica, medieval tower houses are in the origin of many modern age pazos, notable residents as well as strongholds. A feature particular to Germany are the few preserved tower houses of Ratisbon, reminiscence of those of San Gimignano. You can also find these tower houses in the Balkans. Uh, you can find them in Estonia. Also there's tower houses in Russia, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, America, South America. They're all over. The Yemen city of Shibam has hundreds of tower houses some of which are among the tallest mud buildings in the world. And personally, these were my favourite ones. So we're going to look at all these. And have a look and see what's going on. But these pictures here are just because I wanted to get an insight of what it looked like back in the day. To get a feel of what it looked like. But like I said, a lot of these places got destroyed in wars. Uh, there was plagues. There's plagues everywhere. Italy, 
got hit by plagues dramatically. But you can see why these places got bombed and blown up. This is actually Bologna, by the way. So you can see why they blew this up, smashed it up. It's just a common tactic. It's either a war or a plague or some sort of disease. That's just to depopulate, get them, get rid of stuff. So they can rebuild, rewrite history. It's just the same old script. So at one point, Bologna had 170 towers. Now, these towers, they've, they've got all these holes around them. And when I was doing some research on them, it said that it was for scaffolding, but I believe they had wooden structures outside. And maybe the, um, the actual brick itself was just like a staircase, you know? And you go up through the brick tower and then you can exit because you've got loads of windows and doors on there. So I'm guessing you stepped out onto wooden platforms up there. But anyway, look, the plague. Let's have a look. The Italian plague of 1629 to 1631 was a series of outbreaks of bubonic plague that ravaged northern and central Italy. This epidemic, often referred to as the Great Plague of Milan, claimed possibly 1 million lives or about 25% of the population. So that was a, uh, a successful operation by the controllers. Just wiped out 25% of the uh, population. So, as usual, they put a blame on someone, so they blamed the German and the French troops for carrying the plague into the city. And um, infected with the disease. So in one year, Venice lost 46,000 people out of a population of 140,000 people. Bologna lost 15,000 people. Uh, the neighbouring smaller cities of Medina and Parma uh, were also heavily affected. This outbreak of the plague also spread to north into Tyrol and the Alpine region of Western Austria and Northern Italy. And this is where all this medieval stuff is. And, and obviously there's a lot of wars and these places have been blown up. So it's just literally get rid of these people, have a few wars and then we'll repopulate it, rewrite the history books and no one will ever know. So the later outbreaks of a bubonic plague in Florence, Naples, Rome and Genoa a few years later. So this is the deaths estimated. And on the right is the percentage of population from that city lost. So let's have a look at the uh, epidemics. So let's have a look caused by infectious disease, widespread, non-communicable disease. So the Black Death, 75 to 200 million. It's a bit of a big gap there. Spanish flu, plague of Justinian, HIV, the third plague, all this, all this stuff just man-made, all of it, clearly. This has just been going on forever since we know about it. Asian flu, Hong Kong flu, COVID's even in there now. Look at that. Fifty percent of the Mexican population wiped out. Jeez, actually that's quite interesting. 1576. I think that's when the, In the Incas were finished. Anyway, let's have a look. San Gimignano. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Gimignano. Anyway. It's a town of fine towers. It's famous for its medieval architecture, unique present pre preservation. And at its peak, it had 72 tower houses, 50 meters high, some of them. And it was in this star fault. And I thought the shape of this star fault was quite comical. It looked like a cartoon star to me. It looked like something like this. But, it's quite old this star fault because 
I couldn't really find no maps on it at all. Let's have a look at the tower blocks in here. It's like a Manhattan. It looks like a Twin Towers on the right, actually. But you can see doors. They look like doors on them. So I believe there's wooden platforms you can come outside. Maybe there are balconies or maybe there's something... I don't know, a dwelling space. But you only build up when you can't build out. So maybe it's to... Um, for a population problem. Or maybe they weren't even used as residential towers. Maybe they're used for something else. But this is a um, map showing you where all the towers are left. So if anyone's going there, you can go and have a look. And another thing I noticed, all these star forts have a little mini star fort next to it. And I believe that's like a little substation to power the actual fortification. And you can see here how old these blocks are at the bottom. And then it goes up to brick at the, just above the arch. So to me that means it's been taken over and rebuilt. The city flourished until 1348 when it was hit struck by the Black Death that affected all of Europe and about half of the town folk dead. The town submitted to the rule of Florence. Initially, some Gothic palazzi were built in the Florence style, and many of the towers were reduced to the height of the houses. Hmm. Interesting. So a lot of the houses there uh, were towers, and they've just been uh, cut down to size. So this is what's left of that cartoon star fault. I've got real data problems at the moment so it's taking very long to load. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to load this video soon anyway. Hopefully it's fixed soon. It's Friday at the moment. Let's have a look what's going on in here then. This one was built on top of a hillside. And believe me, there's definitely stuff underneath all this. So I just wanted to have a look at a tower. So you can see all these things sticking out of them. And then you've got loads of holes in them. Yeah, that's it. Look. My date is very slow, look. Have a look at the pipe work. Not bad. Very old world. Let's have a look. And these are just the remaining ones. A bell tower. That white tower is part of a church. These bell towers always have a nook like a, like a, a wind compass thing on top. I wonder if that is to indicate people were which way they're energy was flowing back then just guessing anyway Luca proper star fault beautiful it's ginormous giganta I'll show you how big it is that circle top left that bastion is this part here so you can see how big that is That's a fish eye lens. And you can see the uh, geoengineering of the right hand side of the screen. And the tower. So there were 72 there. So this, this reminds me of Malta, this does. These bastions, the 100% the, you could go inside them. I bet they're all blocked up around there though. Here was a very interesting photo. This one had trees uh, growing on the top. And I couldn't zoom in enough. I wanted to know where the roots were going. 
Uh, but very old red brick. Extremely old. And you can see, look, it looks like they had platforms on there. They must have. Well, I can just imagine, like, boxed boxed rooms or boxed platforms coming off of them. It makes sense. But they was... When, when you Google it, it says it's for scaffolding. I bet it's beautiful up there. Hidden away from the sun. So that's one attached to, like, a church. I need to go to Italy. I've been there. I drove. I actually drove through Italy when I drove to Malta. I drove from door to door, from South End to Valletta. Obviously, I had to get a boat from Italy straight past Sicily into Valletta. Took took me four days. Four days and a lot of waiting around and a lot of stress, but it was good. I stopped off in Dijon for the night, Pisa for the night, and Salerno, and then, and then I was in Malta. But it's very, very old world. And these buildings must be, oh God, I don't know, at least 500 years old. And if you look carefully, you can see like there's windows that are all on different levels. Some are symmetrical to the buildings, but look, can you see this? What's, this, what's all this about? Got little windows, big windows. Very, 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 very strange. All right. Let's have a look at this building. This was very old. You can actually see the arches have been filled in now. Yeah, they had decorative windows, and then windows have gone. Now you've got square windows put in. You can faintly see the arches, and you can see where it's been rebuilt. Some of that because different colour red brick. But that's four stories high. One, two, three, four, five stories high. And these are very old world buildings. Again, look at that. Ferreira. See what I mean by this little substation on the left-hand side to the actual fortification. Now, these are some ruins in here, and I couldn't believe it. How old is this? And mud flooded. And I like how you've got a little river stream flowing. You could put a pent on wheel on there and have free electricity with a dynamo attached. This looks like it's a petrified tower. Very square. Very, very square. And the base of it looks like it's um, a pyramid. It looks like it's a, a square on top of a pyramid. Or something like that. On the right hand side. Not that, but along them lines. So I reckon... I reckon the thing on the left is actually a proper shape of a frequency pattern and I believe that was generating some frequency for the fortification because you have man-made rivers flying all the way around this all bricked out, all stonework, all to channel water to these places and it's, like I said, I'm, I'm teaching myself about electrics at the moment and I'm learning three phase delta and y and I can't believe the mathematics and the geometry that are going into uh, electrics and it's so similar to star faults. It's, it's, it's incredible. Like the degrees, everything is. Look, look at these notes. So that's just, it looks like a star fault. So you've got three 120 degrees there, three sources of power. This is, yeah, very, very complicated stuff. The free face, but yeah, look, look at this. Now I can see three one hundred and twenty degree angles in this. And they're telling me there's no, there's no coincidence in this. 
Anyway, let's get to my favourite part. Shabam Had Ramalt is a town in Yemen with 7,000 inhabitants. It's the seat of the district Shabam. Known for its mud brick made high rise buildings. It's the Chicago of the desert or the Manhattan of the desert. The first known inscriptions about the city dates from the 1st century CE. It was the capital of the kingdom. In the 20th century, it was one of the three major cities of the Oalti Sultanate. Sultanate. Sorry about that. The others being Al Muka, Mukala, and Ashir. The city was listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 18, 1982. In 2008, a tropical cyclone flooded Shibam. That's strange because it's still there. Do you know what I mean? Mud buildings, once you see these buildings, it's these <laughs> incredible. It suffered damage in the Civil War and it suffered uh, car bombings, and there was also collation bombing in 2015. The houses of Shibam are all made out of mud brick, and about 500 of them are block towers which rise 5 to 11 storeys high, with each floor having one or two rooms. This architecture style was used in order to protect residents from attacks. While Shabam has been in existence for an estimated 1700 years, most of its city houses originate from the 16th century, many thought to have been rebuilt numerous times in the last few centuries. Okay, fair enough. But still, it's mad that they've still been doing that technique for 2,000 years. Shabam is often called the oldest skyscraper city in the world. It is one of the oldest and best examples of urban planning based on the principle of vertical construction. The city has some of the tallest mud buildings in the world, with some of them over 30 metres, 98 feet in height, thus being early high-rise apartment buildings. In order to protect the buildings from rain and erosion, the walls must be routinely maintained by applying fresh layers of mud. The city is surrounded by a fortified wall, giving its name, the walled city of Shabam. Now I had a look and I couldn't find this wall. So I don't know what they're on about. The mud brick buildings are frequently threatened by wind, rain and heat erosion and require constant upkeep in order to maintain their structure. The city was heavily affected by flooding from a tropical cyclone in 2008. The foundations of many of the buildings in the city were compromised by flood waters, eventually leading to their collapse. It was also a target of Al Qaeda attacks in 2009. It's a load of crap. All right. In 2015, Shaban was added to the list of World Heritage Sites in danger when violent civil war erupted in Yemen. Historical buildings were significantly damaged during the heavy bombings in Sana'a and remain at risk from armed conflict. I swear down these walls are just to go and smash places up and get rid of this history. That's all it is. So here we go. I couldn't find no wall. Nothing to nothing to uh, shout home about anyway. Because when you mention a wall like that, you expect some ginormous fortified star city. That's what I was expecting. But there weren't nothing really. I'll show you. It's just in the desert. Look. Look at this. This is all tower blocks made out of mud. There is a little tiny wall, but it's not. What is it? It's about five foot high. But these are tower blocks. Here we go. There's the wall. Alright, oh, so that's probably about ten foot. So I didn't actually notice it when I was looking because I was looking at the buildings. But it's not a ginormous, mate, the buildings are more desirable than the wall, so I don't know why you call it the, oh, I don't know. Anyway, just look at how well they're built. The windows, that's amazing, isn't it? This is all done by mud. We've got some pictures of the interior and what the streets look like as well. You see, this just blew me away, I couldn't believe it. Absolutely astonishing. It looks like it looks like a Manhattan skyline made out of mud. You've got glass windows in there. It's got street lights. Electricity, water, you know. 
and this is inside so these are the windows looking what well, the windows that you're looking at basically I wouldn't mind living here it looks amazing I wonder if the all night stuff's done out of the mud as well but they sit on the floor I guess they eat on the floor I don't know what this was if it's a kitchen or a toilet same again but remarkable eh? and this is maintenance so this is what they do every now and then you've got geezers going up and down like recladding it I suppose here you can see I don't know if they're telegraph cables or electrical cables going from building to building just like you're in a, a any normal city really but it's funny how we no, we're not talking about this we are like I look, I spend hours and hours researching and I've just come across this now so why are we not talking about this? why do we not get shown about stuff like this? I think it's because they don't want us to think that we can actually go and do our own stuff, build our own stuff and I know this is probably part of a government or some sort of matrical system over there but clearly when it was done at the start it was done for themselves this is a metropolis, a mud metropolis. It's probably got some wealthy families that own it now. People pay rent just like in England or or in America, anywhere, any westernised country. But these are the streets anyway. So this is what the streets look like. So you've got the cables up there. I don't know if they're on the old telephone, you know, the Thomas Bell, or their, or their electrical cables, I'm not sure. But the windows look good, and you can see how thick the walls are, actually. They've got to be about 600mm thick. Uh, 60 centimetres, sorry. It's almost unbelievable, isn't it? Not another road. It's crazy. 7,000 people. Look at this. This is an old photo though. Look at that. Look at that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 stories. 10 stories. I wonder if there's like plans for building these or it's just design and build as you go up. Or maybe they had to copy a certain plan because a lot of them look very similar. Well, I've only actually seen about five different designs, to be honest with you. So maybe that was the, maybe those plans. Look, here we go. That must be wood. Here's that wall. Here it is. But it's nothing to run about, is it? And this is an aerial view from a distance. And also, take note of the completely flat tops of the mountains in the background. And that building there, just to give you a bit of perspective, would be about this size. It'd be a little two-storey, one-floor building. Just to give you a perspective of the other buildings in the background. That'd be something like that. You know, so they are quite big buildings. There's some on the other side of the road. Or river. I don't know if there's a river. It might be a river. And this photo just caught me off. What a, what beauty this photo is, eh? I need to go here. But again, you're scared of these places because of the wars. You're told not to go to these places. They plant these little subconscious seeds, you know? I mean, I wanted to go to Egypt about five years ago and they said there was a load of bombings and uh, shootings and that, and guess what? You know what I mean? Like, no one wants to go there now, but... They just scare you to go to places so you don't look at them. And realise that what we're living like is it's not right. Well, like, imagine this could have been a community of people Free thinkers. It still might be actually. I don't know. 
That's why they're completely cut from the Western world. It makes sense. Now this just reminded me of when I was on holiday as a kid when I went to Benidorm. Right. I couldn't actually find a picture very good similar, but I found one close to it. It just reminded me of the high rise with the beach. Uh, you know, palm trees and that. Something like this. I actually went water skiing there and that's where I developed my fear for fish because I fell off and I had them all swimming around me and I had to wait for the geezer to come and pick me up on a boat and I was, I was about 13 and I was panicking and I hated it and since then I don't go in the water no more. Well I do but only where I can see what's going on. See there was another place called Sana which we'll uh, get to in a minute which was the capital. This is uh, Marib, and it's a. Uh, it used to be the capital, but you can have a look here. It's got these buildings again, but this just looks desolate now. It looks like it's a ghost town, and it's very hard when, when you're looking on. Um, look, when you're looking on Google Earth in like places like this, it's very hard because everything's the same colour. The roads, the buildings, you know, the terrain. It's very, very difficult. But these are ruins of. Um, one of these tower block cities and this I think was the oh sorry so I've got a frog in my throat so this is Sana and this is 2500 years it's been inhabited for more than and I could see it. Yeah, there must have been a star fault here it must have been but this is the old city I just want to prove to you what I'm about to show you is the old city it's not the new city now look at this. This is a view from one of the towers. And uh, these are all ancient tower blocks. Very, very old tower blocks. Uh, I don't seem that big because I'm in the tallest building in the, uh, in the manor. So I'm looking down at them all. But these are all massive tower blocks. If you can count... Look, some of them have got seven stories, uh, five stories. And this is the old city. The old city of Sana, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, has a distinctive architectural character, most notably expressed in its multi-story buildings decorated with geometric patterns. Let's have a look at these buildings, shall we? Some of them are built directly into and onto rocks. And you can see this building down on the right is actually, it's got a first floor. And you can see how many stories this goes up. And I guess it goes into the actual rock itself. Because you can see some doors or windows there. But look, very old. This is the old town, by the way. Not the new town. Just to give you an idea of how old it is. Just look at the block work and the weathering. And this is a, a street down that road. Now I don't know if that's render against that man with a white top on. Or that was part of a rock cut structure. Or it's been petrified, who knows. Again, another alleyway down this city. And you can see cables and pipes and everything. It's incredible. I've never even heard of this till, till the last few days. Uh, this one had a fortified wall. Now this is a wall to talk about. Look at that. And it even matches the architecture inside as well. Incredible. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stories that building in the background. Beautiful. And this is a picture of it at sunset, which lights up the buildings, gives it a nice rustic colour, I thought. And this is it lit up. Twilight. Incredible, eh? It's 
it's very busy and these are all red brick and very ornate like I said they had geometric patterns and these are all tower block buildings so when you look at Bologna Bologna is nothing now really compared to all this so when you want to look for something don't look in the western world because it's just a it'd have been ruined and that's even if you can find it but it'd have been ruined covered up altered so that's another little tip for you if you're doing history try and avoid that sort of stuff so these are some more buildings more more of these town tower houses that I found from around the world oh, I think this one was in Iraq I think that's desolate now these were the Vanek towers in Russia you can see how big they are with the uh, perspective of the mountains in the background and this is the Sventi towers and this was 1,500 years ago you can see how big they are compared to the houses Himalayan towers 1,600 years old just scattered about a lot of them look like they're connected to houses and this is in Scotland unknown date but they're all over the shop all over the shop but the best preserved ones are outside of western world now look how flat the uh, mountains are in the background by the way are they man made or are they chopped down or what also these tower blocks you can see windows in them and when I was doing the research I couldn't remember where these were And when I was trying to look for them again, I couldn't find them. So that's how difficult it is to find this sort of stuff. But you can vaguely see it, look. They've got windows all through them. Doors. So there you go, I hope this was a, a little eye-opener for you. Because it certainly was for me. I thought I was just going to be looking at tower blocks in old star forts like Bologna and things like that but like like whatever you do you scratch the surface and you open up a tin of worms it's just whether you're ready to see that tin of worms you know but more all over the shop so it's like I said I don't know when this video is going to be able to be visible but it's Friday, it's Friday day, and I'm basically trying to upload it now, but I don't have enough a strong connection, it just keeps cutting out. So, it will be there. Thanks for watching, but just before I go, I want to show you Rainbow Island in Iran. This is another thing I come across, and it knocked my socks off again. Couldn't believe it. I don't know what's making these colours go like this. Uh, I'll show you. You've got caves underground. You've got you've got mountains that are different colours. The river is different colour. So you've got like a Red Sea, which was quite interesting. And you've also got these colourful mountains. Now, obviously, I know it's probably subject to uh, enhancement of colour. But you can see they are different colours. So I'd like to know what causes this. This is very strange to me. Red, red rivers. Maybe it's the iron in the in the. I don't know. I really don't know. And look, very strange. I think this one has no filter in it because this looks like it could be genuine. And this is underground. Quite crazy, eh? I'd love to go there. Anyway, 
I hope you've enjoyed it. Like I said, I hope it's been an eye opener. I hope you've seen something today that you haven't seen before. Because that's the idea. That's my goal is to show things that people haven't seen before. Obviously, I know it's a numbers game and some people have, but you can only try your best. So thanks for watching. Stay positive. Ignore the parasites. One love. Ta-da.